Sure, there's so many things on my mind and on my heart as it relates to this matter. I want to start, first of all, with the president's uh, statement. It is the weakest, most disrespectful statement that I've read from a president in a very long time. Why do I say that? You continue to see a man who continues to demonstrate that clearly he is not in charge of this government. When this scandal first broke, we had to protest before Nigel Dharam Lal uh, proceeded on leave. And Irfan Ali did not have the courage to require Nigel Dharam Lal to proceed on leave. That's the first omission on his part, his first failing in this matter. And then now, he has offered his resignation after having dragged the Guyanese people, the victim of these alleged acts, through two weeks almost of absolute heartache and, 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 and terror. And so now he has resigned. And it appears to me that the Ali administration expects that this is not the end of it. Well, this is not the end of it. Because a resignation is not justice. And the people of Guyana, that young lady, and all of the other young ladies who have had this traumatic experience at Nigel Dharam Lal's hands, they deserve justice. And what does justice look like in this situation? It looks like Nigel Darmlal being made to answer in a court of law. Being made to answer for these allegations and answer these charges. That is what justice looks like. That is what the ordinary Guyanese would be made to face if they were on the other end of such allegations. We have seen... Guyanese citizens thrown before the court for far less. But here you have a government that is indicating to the people of Guyana that the law is only for some. And that as long as you are, as long as you are connected to the PPPC, as long as you have money, the law will work for you. If you don't, then may God have mercy on you. That is the message that the people of Guyana have received from this entire ordeal. And I want to say to us that as Guyanese, unless we stand up now and insist that the only equalizer, the rule of law that we have, that we stand up for that equalizer, then whatever befalls this nation, will be on our heads and on our shoulders because the protection of our women, the protection of our children, the protection of our young boys and girls, the protection of our indigenous peoples must be a non-negotiable. Equality before the law of every Guyanese must be a non-negotiable. And when we wink at these injustices, we have to be mindful that eventually these injustices do not visit us. This is a grave matter. This is a serious matter. And we cannot afford to have those involved in it go scot-free. There has to be a complete investigation on the handling of this issue. This issue was bungled from the time that statement that open letter to the president made it out into the public space. You have seen a government that has failed every step of the way to protect the victim, to protect the accused, rather, and to make the victim the accused. They took her into protective custody. When they realized that she was communicating through her devices, they took them away. 
Not only did they take that away, closing her off from the outside world, but they denied her, despite repeated requests, legal counsel. Not to mention the senior superintendent who was involved in an attempted cover-up and who must be made to answer for his actions. So every step of the way they have failed. The police chief, the crime chief, issuing statements when it was not in his domain or jurisdiction to so do, but rushing to bring a premature end to these things. The people of Guyana have noted these things. And so if we as a people do not stand up and require that this government hold an investigation into how this matter was handled, we would have failed and we would have contributed to uh, an environment and a situation where victims, young women, young boys, who may be the victims of these predators, we will have contributed to an environment where they fear coming forward. And God help us if that is what we do or we allow by our omission and our inaction, we allow that to happen. We can't allow that to happen. And so I'm saying to us as Guyanese, we have to sound our voices until we are hoarse if need be. We have to sound our voices. We have to let this government know that no one is above the law. And we have to hold the Irfan Ali accountable for his words. He said our women and children, their protection must be our first priority. And here again, they have failed to demonstrate it. And then he issues the most weak, the most ridiculous statement, insulting Guyanese. Oh, you see, we have given the law an opportunity to work. Nonsense. What the Guyanese people saw was an attempt to buy time, to break the victim and to cover up and to shield Darren Lal from accountability. That is what we saw. And Darren Lal is hurt. We talk about Nigel Darren Lal being personally affected. Put yourself in the shoes of the victim who was violated in the vilest of ways. Yes, and he is personally hurt and he is ashamed. Well, let me say this. The shame that he feels Vindya Pasad must feel it and she too must resign because she has brought the government into disrepute the way they handled it. Priya Manik Chan must also feel very ashamed and she too must resign since everybody is being ashamed and is so concerned about the image of the government. You people are a blot on the face of our country with the way you have handled this. You have created a national embarrassment. People are looking on at Guyana and wondering is this some alternate universe that Guyanese are inhabiting? And we as Guyanese, we must resist every attempt to paint us as a lawless people and as a people who condone injustice. And to do that, we have to stand up for justice. We have to stand up for the voiceless. We must speak up for those who are unable to speak for themselves. So the protest will continue. I suspect that they do not want um, the Secretary of State of the U.S. to come to see protest action. But Guyanese people are not going to be deterred by this offering of Dharamlal's resignation. He must face charges. As a lawyer, those statements that were leaked, if that is what the DPP had before her, every element necessary for the offense is contained in those statements. So in my 20 years of legal practice, I can't figure out what more needs to be investigated. Because every element is contained on the face of those statements. And anything else ought to have been in a court of law. But when you look at those statements, Sherrod, you will see in them, those purported statements, that his fare was jail. He said, I don't mind losing the job. That's the worst that can happen to me, but at least I won't go to jail. Because really, he's looking at a good 60 years had this matter gone to court and had he um, been tried by a jury of, 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 of Guyanese citizens. And so, just like how, if this was somebody from Sophia that this allegation was leveled against, or from Linden, or from Buxton, or from Crane, or from Blackbush Polder, just like how if they were standing accused of what Dharam Lal was standing accused of. They would have had to have faced the law. Nigel Dharam Lal must face the law.